Here. John. Here. John. Here. John. Okay. Here. Here. Jim. Here. Jim. All right. Alex. Here. Alex. Here. No, Jen. Jen Pody. Here. <gasps> I'm here. Mike Sinatra. Here. Julie Stewart. Julie. I don't see her. Okay, Peter. Here. It's Pete. Pete, you're here. Pete. I'm here. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know if it's my computer or or what. Yeah, your video is frozen. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I, I show us with 11 I'm people. Here. So Lisa, do you agree we have a quorum? We do a quorum. Okay. We'll open the meeting. The first item on the agenda after the call to order is the 2021-22 budget discussions and an action if it is the will of the commit the of the board to approve the school bud district's budget for the 2021 year. This would be to make the the um, uh, the superintendent's budget our budget. So where are we? I think I meant to present that as the head of the finance committee. Okay, Alex, I recognize you. Please. Okay, I hope everyone has had an opportunity to review Megan's uh, proposed budget. Um, Megan asked every department to try to reduce their, uh, their requests by 5%. And most departments were able to do that with obviously the, op the obvious exception of the capital facilities that went up 500%. And the debt service that went up just under eight. Um, the one other category that I want to comment on that went up 3% is the Board of Education's budget. And I think we've got to tighten our belts here. Um, you know, we've got to set the example. Um, AgriScience had been very successful and sur surpassed all early projections. Uh, between the state money, tuition in, we're going to be able to credit refund the town's $803,000. That's about three and a third percent of our budget. Uh, hopefully there will be additional funds uh, coming in uh, during the year. Um, the 2020-21 budget was flat at around 22 million eight. Um, this year's request is 23,183. That is a 1.64% increase. If you remember last year, we were able to cut 181,000 by using funds from the 1% uh, fund. Uh, I wouldn't wanna make a habit of this. Um, we have uh, increases. Uh, remember staff is 59% uh, of our budget and their benefits are 15%. Uh, if you calculate, uh, that amount by the amount that they contractually there to increase, um, it comes out to uh, uh, what is a total of just uh, about 1.86% increase. So that's a more than we're going to increase. So obviously cuts have been made elsewhere. Um, also uh, something that's in our budget, which we did not budget for last year is COVID. Uh, that'll be about 120,000 uh, in the budget for this year. Um, let me just see what else I want to uh, see on uh, COVID. And then uh, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, you know, I think that 
it's a good time to discuss the budget questions we might have about it uh concerns any changes that we might want to make um and then adopt a budget so that we can present it next monday uh to the uh to the entire community thank you okay Do we have anyone who has a question, a concern, who wants to discuss the superintendent's budget? Greg? Yes, Jim. Yeah. So what is the committee's recommendation with regard to the budget? Is there a recommendation? Um, I don't know if we took a poll. Uh, I personally am in favor of it. Uh, do, do other right. committee members want to talk about what their position are? Can I just, Greg? Yes, Jim. Just to get it, just to get it on the floor. I'll make a motion that the budget be approved as is. Okay. Um, I'll second uh, that. Jennifer. I was just going to second it. Okay, second. Uh, moved and seconded. I mean, my view of this is it's actually a really smart budget, and I'll tell you why. It's a smart budget because it looks in the face a large increase that we've suffered as a result of COVID. We have a significant increase, not a significant, but an increase based on the fact that we negotiated contracts with employees, labor contracts. And we've managed to increase the budget 1.4% in the Six year four. when our labor contracts are up Two point something percent. So I think it's a great budget, and, it, and you know we've 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 not cut any meat out of our system. What we've done is we've figured out smart ways to deal with what we have. So from that perspective, I think it's a great budget. I mean, I'm not sure what better we can do. If anyone has an idea, please tell me. Please disabuse me of the knowledge that I think this is a really great, well put up budget. John. <laughs> Want me? Yes, because okay, if I, anyone's going to say I'm I, out of my mind, it's you. And if, if you don't... Then you're not I, out of your mind, but I do, I do want to propose a change. I have a couple of comments and a couple of questions. Number one, I want to commend Nicole for um, revising the formulation of the budget, the format. Uh, it's definitely a big improvement over previous years. It's very understandable. It's repetitive. You can, um, it's easier to navigate, uh, more transparent. Uh, you can determine the cost breakdowns for each of the four schools, for the ag science, the special ed, the transportation, uh, basically all the departments. Uh, and, uh, and like I said, it's a big improvement over previous budgets where you, you have to hunt and search and you still don't know where you are. So this is, uh, this is a great uh, format of the budget. Um, secondly, I have a question about the, um, the gutter replacements at Burnham School. They're replacing the copper gutter. So uh, this is for Don, I guess. Um, what material is, are the new gutters going to be? I've estimated their cost in copper, but um, when the bid goes out, we'll have to identify the total cost of the roof and the, and the gutters at the same time. That $15,000 cost was for copper? Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, there, there's not a lot of gutter. Um, um, and I just want to clarify a few things on the, um, the bonding repayments, the interest. So I'm going to the budget. It's uh, page 39 of page 61. Um, actually under appendix or exhibit A, it's page 14 of 14. I'll give everybody a minute till they see that if they can search for it.
So these questions are probably basically for Nicole. Uh, halfway down the page, 2019 bond principle, 400,000. I assume that's the principle on the, the bonds, uh, the current, is that, is it 8 million or 8. 700? It's 8.25 million. 8.25 million. And then the debt service, that's the interest. Uh, no, wait a minute. That's, that's the interest of the, um, of the, of those bonds plus the ban, plus the bans, no, the, the debt upcoming service, bans. The debt service is the interest on the bond only. Okay, on, on the $8 million bonds. Mm -hmm. And then I'm seeing uh, this must be interest on referendum ban financing. That's for the um, capital improvements, the roof, the um, heat, the heat, the windows. Okay, Correct. Um, that's, that's coming up on Wednesday. That's $3 million. I see the, um, I guess it's the payment on that at 80,000. So what that is, is it's estimated interest on that band, as well as the cost to go to permanent bond financing in November. Okay, so that explains the difference between the, the line below it, the, the agri-science lab ban, which we're waiting for the state reimbursement on. Um, that's only 60,000. Correct, because there's no costs included in that above for a, any kind of permanent financing, because that will never become permanent. Even with the rollover. So there, there's funds for the rollover. Yeah. That's less expensive than a full bond issue. Okay. So when we do the full bond issue on the 3 million, it will be more expensive than just the band rollover. Okay, I got it. And I, I would like to propose a change. Um, ben is gonna put up a chart, I believe. Are you there, Ben? Okay, so this is the um, the history, the eleven year history that Nicole sent me of the um, capital reserve, the one percent fund, and actually the um, state legislature is um, going to be meeting on soon to um, to vote on its bill sixty six eighteen House Bill sixty six eighteen, and. What it, what it does is um, increases the regional um, uh, percentage from 1% to 2% if the bill passes. So we have the potential of adding, if you look at the 2020 uh, amount, $1,093,297, we have the potential of adding over $500,000 to that if the state um, approves the, um, the increase to 2% for the regional school districts, which I, I don't see how they could not do that. But um, long story short, uh, when you consider the history, like in 2010, it was well less than 400,000. You know, and right now, uh, I can't see any reason why we can't remove the $450,000 for the capital improvements that is in the budget and take, take the money out of the capital reserve and use it for those projects. There's no reason why um, the, uh, the taxpayers um, who already put that money in the capital reserve for such, for such projects, there's no reason why we should double charge them again this year uh, just to have a million and a half in the bank. Uh, if that doesn't make sense. The other, the other issue is, you know, maybe some people can afford tax increases this year, but there are a lot of people who are still dealing with the financial hardships of COVID. And I don't see why, you know, we can't bring this, if we, if we take that $450,000 out of the budget, we'll have a zero or a minus increase in our budget this year. So um, I'm gonna make a motion to withdraw that $450,000 from the budget and, um, and 
and you know we could well pay for those projects out of the capital reserve. But I second that. Jim, and then Jen, and then Alex. Who's first? Jim. Uh, uh, Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. Is she there? Yes. Oh. She is. You opined on this the last meeting we had. Has your opinion changed? Has anything changed since that meeting? And can you tell us what your position is with regard to the motion? Um, my opinion hasn't changed since the last meeting. I still believe it's in our best interest to budget for those expenses. I also believe that I would like to see the board either decide to take those out of the budget or leave them in. But I think the conversation as to whether or not to pay for that out of the 1% capital fund is a different conversation if you request to the superintendent at a different meeting. Um, if the Do you does pass, it's not actually over 500,000, it's 456,000. Um, and my concern with the numbers that um, John shared of the balances over the last 11 years is it took us 10 years to build that balance. And we're gonna whack it back down to seven years, seven years ago with one repair. And that still um, leaves us insecure when it comes to needing facilities repairs that are unexpected. We have the benefit of expected repairs right now that we can do. I'm sorry, Jim, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, yes, if you don't mind. Are you, do you still have the concern with regard to the bonding issue that you're unsure of how it's gonna proceed forward and that the largest balance you can carry is a good thing in that regard? Do you still feel that way? Um, yes, I mean, I think recently we came up for review by Moody um, last week or the week before, and we were able to preserve our rating, which they wanted to systematically downgrade all regional school districts. And um, part of the credit, the press release that came out on our credit as to why we were able to preserve our, our AA1 rating was because of the strength of our reserves. Um, and they knew about the $3 million borrowing when they took us into review. I had disclosed that. All right, thank you. Could I just add one thing? Ben, could you put up that chart again? So again, the one million ninety three thousand two hundred ninety seven um, is going to be there's going to be two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars added to that. You remove the two fifty or the four excuse me four fifty six or four fifty. You're still going to have more than we had in twenty nineteen. <clears throat> Sorry, John. The situation has changed since twenty nineteen. No, it hasn't. We borrowed eight million dollars with with that much money in there. Right. We bonded, we bonded eight million dollars with uh, nine hundred and fifty one thousand dollars in there. It's the same situation. The director of finance is recommending against it. So, John's position relies on two things that we can't control. It relies on us having enough money to fund that account with two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars this year which at this point this year, I cannot tell you whether or not we're gonna be in a position to do that because we continue to realize unexpected expenses due to the pandemic. And in my prior two years here in March, I could make that definitive uh, recommendation that the board go ahead and transfer that 1%. We're not in a position to do that yet. And we also don't know what the legislature is gonna do with the 2%. If the legislature does pass the 2%, I still need to have the 2% surplus put into that account. So we're talking about money that may or may not exist. And I just want that to be clear when the board is evaluating them. Jen, you had, you, you, you were trying to speak. Well, no, I just, I was, I was going to ask the same question that Jim did. I wanted Nicole's input and I just will share that I support Nicole's recommendation um, since she is the person that's presented this budget along with um, Megan. And so that is where I am. That's my support for Nicole. Okay, uh, uh, Megan, you were 
looking to weigh in. Yeah, no, and um, just one of the comments, John, when you had talked about us going to market um, two years ago, and I also think this is the second time we're going to market in two years. Before that, it had been a number of years before we had gone out to bond. So to say that we are in a different situation, we also need to make it look like we're not going to constantly have to go into bonding situations. So uh, us having money in the bank, it gives us better credit ratings. We recognize how Moody's has changed its formula. And so anything we can do to strengthen our position at this point becomes a good move on our part. I, I think we are in a very different position in the market than we had been two years ago. So I just wanted to make certain that I shared that I don't see that as apples to apples right now. Okay. Any further input, Mary? Yes. I. I what, from what Nicole has just said about the fact that we cannot guarantee that we even have the 1%, never mind the 2% to put in because of this unusual year, I, I, don't, I don't think that we should take the money out of the, the, the capital non-recurring account. And usually I would say, yes, let's go ahead and do that. But to take half of the money that we have there away, I, that doesn't seem like a good idea to me because we just don't know what other things can come up during the Not half would be less than a third. How could it be less than a third? If, if it's, uh, it's almost half, if we have a million in there now and you want to take away 456,000. Just to clarify, Nicole, you don't think we're going to have uh, the money to put 1% in for this uh, fiscal year? I don't think that I'm in a position where I could make that recommendation yet. Okay. John, you want to keep your motion on the floor or remove it? Can't hear you. I still want to take a vote on it. Yes. Just so the public can see. Yeah, can you just- Okay, you, 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 Megan? I was just saying, John, can you clarify your motion? From what I'm hearing is you are asking that we are taking off of the budget the roof, the gutters, and the fire. The smoke gutters. detectors. Okay. So that's or what, any portion of. Okay, so that's what it is, is to remove that from the budget is the motion that you're putting on the floor. Right. Okay. Okay, what what is the dollar value of that change? Uh -huh, Nicole has got her calculator going now. <laughs> Just while we're waiting, I'm curious, what could we possibly be going to be intending to bond anytime in the near future. Well, John, the problem we have, and this is the issue with the, the idea of taking the roof off of uh, Burnham, is we, we don't have public authority to bond that money. So we have to take it out of the budget or out of the 1% fund, one of the two, and they decided to take it out of the budget in order to leave the 1% fund where it is. But we can't bond it. We don't have that authority without going back to the taxpayers. And the thought was for a $300,000 project, it wasn't, you know, effective to go back to the taxpayers. I'm talking about, we're worried about, it affecting, we're worried about it affecting our bond rating, but shortly we're going to be, approaching $15 million in bonding before the state reimbursement. So 14, yeah, but, 14 but, million, seven, 14 and three quarter million dollars are gonna be bonded. Yeah, John, but, but number one, the state is gonna refund a certain percentage of that. And at the end of the day, we've got tuition payments to cover a giant, a large portion of that. So to say that that is just, we're out there on the bond market, it's not really accurate. No, I'm I mean, just trying to figure out what, what do we see down the road that we have to do more bonding on? I just can't understand that. 
Well, the, the, the sooner we carve off a lot of our 20 year plan, the sooner we won't have to bond it, we'll get it spent. But, but, but the thing is, we're in an unusual circumstance now where the stuff we have to bond, we can bond at cheap rates and we don't have to bond as much as we thought. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that if we, if we put this, if we take this out of the 1% fund, we're going to reduce the 1% fund to no benefit to the district. That's my concern. What's the benefit? So, so in well, just, sense, there's a motion on the floor. Let's vote. So in okay. end, let me finish this statement. In essence, we have to carry over a million dollars in that capital reserve from now until who knows when. Right. Okay. Until our well, financial, hold on, John, until our financial person tells us that we don't need it, that we can reduce it safely. Right. So we have a motion on the floor. Can, can, can uh, uh, Sue, where are you? I'm here. Okay. Can you read back so we understand what the motion is? I will, but I think Nicole had one to give you the dollar amount, she was asked for the amount. Okay. $450,000. And what does that mean? It's half of a percent. Okay. All right, so, so what, what is the motion before us, uh, Susan? Okay. The, the motion from John was to remove $450,000 from the budget, which would be the roof gutters, and smoke detector at Burnham School. Do I have the correct school? Yes, and to put that into the one percent fund. Is that that's the motion? No, not put it in the one percent fund. To just remove later it. on when you want to do those projects, you remove the money from the one percent fund. Excuse, excuse All right, so remove yeah. those projects from the budget. With exactly. four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. End of motion. But right. that's but I don't, the smoke detectors, I don't believe go to Burnham. Were they all from the same school? I don't think that they're from Burnham. No, the, the, smoke smoke, the smoke detectors are from Chipog, and it is the roof and the gutters that are from Burnham School. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so we're going to remove those items, the $450,000 from the budget, they're going to be removed from the budget. So if we're going to fund them, we have to find a different way. So the idea first, the first thing John's moved is to remove it from the budget. So that's been moved and seconded. Now we need a vote on that. Yes. Uh, are there, is there any further discussion? No. Okay. okay. I don't hear any. So we'll go to a vote. Sue, okay. why don't you take a roll call? Okay. Joe. No. John. Aye. Jim. No. Alex. No. Justin. No. Jen. No. Lisa. No. Mike. No. Julie is absent. Pete. Yes. Mary. No. Greg. No. Motion fails nine to two. Thank you. Okay, so those items are in the budget. Now, the question is, do we have a motion on the budget? I think Jim moved to approve it. Yes, and it was I seconded did. by Lisa. And it was seconded by Lisa. So is there further discussion of the budget? Not hearing much, so uh, why don't we put it to a vote, Sue? The, this is a motion to approve the superintendent's budget as presented. Okay, Joe. Yes. John. No. Jim. Yes. Alex. Yes. Justin. Yes. Jen. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Mike. Yes. Pete. Yes. Mary. Mary. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thumbs up. Greg. Yes. Motion to approve the budget as is passes 10 to one. All right. We are now down to non-disclosure ban to consider if, an appropriate, and if appropriate, provide authority for executive members of the board 
to authorize the issuance of bonds and notes to finance as proposed below. So do I have a motion to approve this, whereas a resolution appropriating $39,491,387 for certain capital and related costs for a new agri-science STEM Academy and re re renovated science wing and other facilities improvements at Chicago Valley School and authorize the issuance of bonds and notes to finance the portion of the appropriation not to pray from grants was approved by the Board of Education on October 5, 2015 and approved at a referendum held on November 10, 2015, the resolution. And whereas the district in order to carry out the proposed authorized by the resolution will issue its notes as provided in the resolution. And whereas in order to ensure an orderly issuance of the district's notes, the Board of Education makes the following direction and delegations now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby directs the officers to carry out the functions and responsibilities authorized by the re resolution. That if the chairman of the Board of Education cannot reasonably carry out the acts and responsibilities authorized by the resolution, those author authorizations will be delegated to the vice chairman of the Board of Education. If the vice chairman of the Board of Education is unable is unavailable to the secretary of the Board of Education. C, that if the treasurer of the Board of Education cannot reasonably carry out the acts and responsibilities authorized by this resolution, those, authorized will be those authorizations will be delegated to the vice chairman of the Board of Education. If the board vice chairman of the Board of Education is unavailable or serving as the chairman of the Board of Education is provided above to the secretary of the Board of Education. Is there a motion to approve that resolution? I so moved. Move. <laughs> moved by Jim. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded. seconded by Jen. Moved and seconded. Are there is there further discussion of yes. this long resolution, Jim? Either Alex or Nicole, can you speak to this, please, and just tell the board briefly what it's for? Nicole, I think, can do a better job, but basically it's designed on behalf of the school. Oh, okay, just for signing. All right, thank you. Great job, Alex. Okay. Is there further discussion? I just have. John. I have a question. Uh, just for a point of clarification for the, um, the public and, um, and the board. Nicole, do you know what the total expenditures for ag science labs and now the, um, the roof, the heating and the windows, what, what will that bring our total to be? I know it's not gonna be 39,491,000, but just ballpark. Do you mean Wait a minute, Wait, you're, this is out of order. We're not on this. Yeah, we are. We're talking about doing bands for this, for the, the exact thing. For the and we're putting it toward the thirty nine million. Yeah, I think I think John is in order. I'll rule that he's in order. So Nicole, can you answer that question? So once we add the three million dollar expenditure, the total project cost will be just over thirty six million. The cost to the district will be eleven and a quarter total cost when we're done. Still eleven and a quarter. Yeah, once okay. we retire the four million. Okay. Okay. Further discussion? All right, we'll put it to a vote. Sue, please call the roll on this motion to approve this non disclosure ban. Okay, Joe. Yes. John. Yes. Jim. Yes. Alex. Yes. Justin. Yes. Jen. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Mike. Yes. Julie, not here. Pete. Uh, yes. Mary. Yes. Greg. Yes. Motion passes 11 to zero. And unanimously. Thank you all very much. I, I think we're going to head off in a good direction with this. So I'm very pleased. If there is nothing else to come before the meeting, I would. Um, um, it's not on the agenda, but I'd like to commend uh, both Greg and uh, uh, Nicole for their efforts uh, before the legislature uh, to get this 1% fund raised to 2%. I know it was a long day waiting for your turn to speak, and I thought they did a great job. 
And Greg, I appreciate getting a copy of your comments. Agreed. Well, I'll put it this way. Poor Nicole. I mean, I was 18th on the list. She was 80th. And uh, I managed to get testimony after about three hours, but she had to wait until after 5.30 p.m. This is a 10 o'clock hearing that she sat there for the rest of the day and testified. And that is a, oh God, that, that I mean, wow. Well, for clarification, it wasn't all the testimony it wasn't about the 2% fund. It was about everything that was in front yes. of them. So it was all the bills that were in front of them. And I was the first one to speak about the 2% fund. And I'll tell you what, I, I actually had two questions. Uh, one, uh, one senator from uh, the, the Hartford area uh, said, oh, God, we screwed up. This is the absolutely right thing to do. And in, in, my, in my comments, you saw that I shouted out a greeting to our state senator. And our state senator thought it was a mistake and it should be corrected. And um, I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, you have no idea how wonderful that was to have our state senator sign up, especially since when he was elected state senator, I was the guy that ran against him. So, uh, I mean, he is, he's done a tremendous job and I think we should recognize that party or no. John? But yes, I, I'd like to add to that. Um, that bill is not a standalone, okay? So it is, it's, it's a portion of the bill that uh, would raise the regional um, school districts from one to 2%. There are other things in that bill. So I believe that the, if you go to the uh, state site, you can, all the board members, it would be beneficial for all the board members to put their testimony in concerning this and, 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 and supporting the, the, um, the raising from 1% to 2%. It's just a matter of, it's not even a, it's not, it's, it's not going to cost the state a cent to, to approve it. And um, it's just a matter of um, changing the language in the statute. So um, I would urge all of the um, board members at least to, um, to submit testimony. And I would be happy to have anyone sign on to my testimony if you like it. And frankly, our representatives are on top of this. And I think they should be praised for it. And I'm the other party and I agree with that. So I think that's very important because when you have when you have members of the legislature that are listening to you and are are working on the things that matter, you need to support them, regardless of party, regardless of partisanship. And Greg, you know, as much as it pains me to say that. Greg, what about if we if we all sign on to your testimony? You think that would help? If, the, if all the signatures of our Board of Education were on it also? Well, I don't think it would hurt. And if you have your own comments, please make them. If you don't and you want to sign on to mine, that's fine. But let's let our legislature know that this matters to us. This really makes a difference for us here in Region 12. Also, um, uh, Eric Berthel, our senator, happens to be the ranking uh, senator uh, from on, on the education committee. So he feels yes. a little bit more weight than other people. He does. And I urge people to contact Eric, Eric Berthel and thank him for being so supportive of this. I think that's really important. And if we don't do that, then damn it, we are on the wrong side of what's good for our kids and what's good for our people. So what can I say? Not, not much else. Uh, right. <laughs> I allotted two hours for this. Uh, you know, we've still got an hour and 21 minutes. That's okay. Well, I'm delighted if we can end early. All I can say is that, uh, you know, this board has led. You've led in an era when everything was wrong. Everything went sideways. And we had staff. And we had a board members that led on this. And thank you very much, because I think we are going to, we, look, we are one of the most desirable school districts that any kid in the state of Connecticut wants to come to. And I thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Thank so what do you think? Are, are we adjourned by, by agreement at 740? Yes. Sounds that way. Thank yeah. you all very much. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Greg.
Thanks, Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.